All right, we're back. Some official Harley tools. Beating utensils. Okay, I got everything all cleaned up now, so pretty clean. You still see that press fit lube is still here, though it don't go away with cleaning. It sticks. All right, so all of this stuff is good. So we're all good to go. So I got all the seals all clearance, all that. All the dive guys are cut down. Everything's good to go. I didn't check my TD lift uh, for how much the valves are open because the valves are sunk. There ain't no damn way they're going to hit. We only got 185 TD anyway, which is not much. So I'm not going to waste my time checking it. Not necessary. Okay, we're going to use some sleeve retainer Loctite for holding the valve seals on and also sealing them up a little bit. So just put a little drop on your finger. That should be enough to do all four valve uh, guides. Ooh, too much sticking on that one. Wipe off any excess off the top of the guide so it does not get on the stem. If it gets on the stem, it don't work. I guess I got some left, see? And a little bit left to do the last one, see? You don't need to flood the guide, you just need to put some on there. And we're just about out now. Okay, take care of that. Okay, now we put a little bit of assembly lube. Torco on the stems. Okay, this is our front head. Put a little amount on there. I always spin them a little bit as I go in. Make sure that everything's nice and lubricated as it goes in. Okay, that's that one. To the rear. Okay. Rotate them a little bit as you go in. Make sure they go on there and sound good. And then looks to be a pretty good condition. Nope. Not quite that much oil. Yeah. Okay. All right, so now I get to put the valve seals on it. I gotta put the lower collar and the shims on also. Okay, this is our rear head. So we go over our stack of parts over there. And we'll grab everything that I put on there. Okay, on the exhaust, we're just putting the collar, nothing else. So this exhaust, collar. Valve seal. When this goes on, you just kind of wiggle it like this a little bit as you go on with steady pressure. Just slips on over the first part and off the second and right on. Okay, the intake. We have our thick shim, 60, and our collar. So put the radius part down. That gives us the most clearance on the guide and the fillet in the guide. And you put that on there. Then you put your seal on there. And the same thing on the front head. This one has 30 thou on both, remember. Okay, so sharp side up. Yeah. There it goes. Uh-oh. What the hell is that all about? 
seal just went right on down and hit it. That's probably an 80 inch seal. There's no way getting that seal off without destroying it, so it's gone. Okay, rear and flat up. Car. Yeah, it doesn't, there's no way of getting that to not go on there. Good luck on using that plastic piece of crap tube they give you. So just beat it on through. That seal is junk. You have a little bit of a piece of a seal material on the guide, on the valve here you need to get off. such a pain to get off. Hmm. Alright, see if I grab a hold of the dike by chance. Probably not. Nope. So normally you split in half when you beat them out, but in this case, no go. That one came off a complete 360, so it's hard to get off. Okay, so this is the wrong seal. This is 5 eighths instead of 9 sixteenths, and it's gone. In the trash can. So somebody's mixing up my seals over here for me. There's one right here. I found another one. See the different size between the two? So someone has been helping me out over here. Now is that someone me or someone else? <laughs> that is the question. I found two of them. I don't know if they all look the same. Alright, back to real work. It's always nice when you get a little friendly surprise in there. That was three dollars. Actually only two fifty each, I think. Or they might still be at my old price, two bucks a piece, I don't remember. Okay, so those go in there like that. Now we gotta tap this on my seal driver. Custom made by me. Once it goes over the top of the gut, it goes for easier. When it hits the bottom, stop. Come up. Make sure the seal's tight by trying to unscrew it. It's good. Make sure you got drag on the, on the valve. No drag on the valve, seal no good. If the guide spins, if the valve seal spins on the guide, it's no good either. Use a bunch of light hits. If you use one big hit, it might overspread it and it doesn't pop back. Seal tight and tight that way. Okay, that seems pretty really good. Now we need 480 clearance minimum. Hopefully we got that. We're over 500. Oh yeah, we're way over 500 on that one. So we're good. Same thing on this head. I like having the valve in there because it keeps the tool straight so it doesn't go like that. If you push on the seal sideways, it makes it too big, it doesn't stay on, it comes with this loose. The Loctite, it locks it on there, but it also seals it. There's always a little bit of gaps from the machine marks in the seal, on the guide I mean. So the lock tab will fill those voids up. Don't keep hitting on it once it bottoms out. It spreads it out makes it junk also. Okay, everything's nice and tight. We're good. Alright, so that worked. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and assemble it. Okay, this is our uh, rear head. 
We're going to use our old uh, Harley spring tension dash 36 number if you're looking for one. They reproduce them. Okay, we're going to do the uh, start on the intake valve. So we come over here to the intake pile. That'd be the second pile over there. Now, if we use the other one, that's the worst one right next to it. Number one's the worst. Number two is the best. If you mix it, this one will coil bind on you. Or it actually won't coil bind. We got enough clearance, but it won't have any section. The spring won't be happy. When springs aren't happy, they break. That's why you give them the clearances. Springs don't like to be overworked. I use my finger on the back side to hold that one, and then I just drop this one in and let gravity do the rest. It doesn't look like it's right. Drop it out. Do it again. This time put it in correctly. You tip in the short, the small side first, the inner side, and, and lay it in. This is not working today. We have more problem with keepers today. Well, they go in just like that. Just drop them in there. No problem. Today, no. Okay, before you pull the collar off, the spring tension compressor off, make sure the keepers look like they're even. This one looks good. And pull it off. Nothing worse by hitting by a valve spring. They hurt when they hit you. Okay, keepers look like they're even and flush. That's what you're looking for. Okay, now we got the exhaust over here. Speed handle. That's what that's for. But the stiffer the springs are, the less it wants to do that. Should be enough. Nope. Another turn. There we go. That's enough now. Inner one, the lower one's not in there correctly. I get pooched in there where it belongs though. Okay, they both look like they're in there flat. Okay, you lay the gasket surface on the table flat. I keep my table from burrs off so I don't transfer it to head gasket surface. Now you take your screwdriver and hit it flat on each collar, or each keeper I mean. Dead center. Give it a little wrap. Here it pop. Hear the valve spring popping. Okay, look at your keepers, make sure they're good. That looks good. Don't see any issues on this side. Now you come in here and measure your key collar, your spring a little bit with your six-inch scale. And we're looking for at least uh uh what the hell is it? Four or three twenty-five is what we're looking for. So this one here is definitely way up there, about 340. This one over here is a real tight three. It's right down there to 315 area. Now this one here looks like I got the spring I actually put on where I can maybe get this in here. But not quite. Eh, no. You're hitting on the you can't you can't see the edge very well, but I'm hitting over here with a caliper, so you can't really get in there. That's the problem with trying to use a veneer caliper in here after you assemble it. Things are in the way, you just can't get a straight shot. If you're not straight, you're not accurate. So that's why you use this. So this one's really, really low, this one's real high, which is where it should be, because that's how we put them in. Okay, now this one over here. Got the exhaust first this time. All right, a little extra 
turns over here. No tension on this one for some reason. All right. Like the keeper be sitting correctly in the valve, not incorrectly. There we go. You can hear it pop, and you can feel it pop up in the stem when it's in the right spot. That one dropped in like it's supposed to. I don't know if you can see that or not, but if the keepers are in there square and straight when you start putting it together, it doesn't bind up. If the keeper digs into the um, groove in the valve, it's, it's overlapping the edge, and it, the tension shoves it up in there, it puts two gouges in the stem when it comes up. Which can allow the keeper not to not come out down the road, who knows. If the keeper is not in there square, it will come out. It'll pop out going down the road. Which could cause some engine damage issues. Not recommended that you do that, so... That could be an option though, if you want to blow your motor up, but it's not a good good option for me. I blow my motors up enough already for other issues. Usually it's because of too much nitrous, too much nitromethane, and too many RPMs. That's usually what does it. Mainly the chemical part, because I use the mechanical part. I make it big enough, strong enough to live. No matter what RPM I turn it. All right, that looks good. Let's hit it anywhere. Boom, 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 boom. You know, so the intake you don't hear it pop and exhaust you do? I guarantee you they're both popping. You just don't hear it. Okay, these need to be 425 on both. And we are over. We're about a good 450, over 450 it looks like. I mean 350, excuse me, wrong number. This one here is, this one here we're not that far, we're a lot lower than that. Hmm, what is up with that? This one is not on the number it should be on. Get over here, I just can't measure it very well over there. Okay, we got it on this side. Obviously had a false number on that side. I don't know if you can see in there, but we're leading 340-ish area it looks like. Like so when you can't really see the the surface you gotta kinda guess. See I'm around the radius part of the spring, it's hard to measure that part. Alright, so there you go. That's all done. Should run pretty good. Looks good. what the valves look like here. So there's our two valves. So what's the actual distance between the valve here? That's what's going to show you some differences between here and here. Quite a bit. This one definitely has more. That makes it 20 or so thou more, which makes sense because the valve is sunk in deeper and it's more toward this edge here. So. so that correlates to more clearance. All right, so these are all uh, pretty well done. There's what the exhaust port looks like. You can see how it flows down this side over here now. Stock they don't. This one here, 
can see how I cut the trough through there to let it flow through that side. That stock way over there, which will never flow. And that's how you make them run a little better, make them more equal. See how uneven the ports are. Between the two of these heads, look how bad this one's all set. See how this is a lot, not nearly as bad. So the ports aren't even equal. These are intake. Intakes are actually a bit closer to each other, but they still vary a lot. So there's that one. You got good flow around both sides of the valve in the guide area. That's because I equalized it as best I could. And the height up there. So anyway, that's how you do it. So that's, that's good to go. And these are uh, 74 heads. So that's it.